three, two, one, and we're live. ESP 010, 010 with Shannon Gray. Thank you for coming on the show, Shannon. Welcome, welcome. Hi. So we have an accentuated version today. This is going to be about a 20-minute video slash podcast slash briefcast. Briefcase, briefcast. I like that. I just made up a new industry term. Holla. <laughs> Hello. Cash money, you heard it here. So this is going to be a quick segment about Anime Boston and then a secondary quick segment about Detroit Become Human. And obviously, as you can see from the title of the YouTube video itself, this is ESP Become Human Anime Boston Edition. So I promised the fans that we we're going to talk about Shannon's role at Anime Boston. So you have staffed Anime Boston for a few years now, right? Yes, this past year was my second year. Okay, okay. I thought it was three for some reason, but two? Okay. Mm, well, Second, third time the charm coming up the next year. Have you staffed any other anime cons, or is Anime Boston your first foray into staffing a convention? Anime Boston is my first con for okay. staffing itself, but I have always perpetuated myself into the staff scene anyways, even when I've gone to other conventions. I usually mingle with the staff, all that okay. stuff. Have you ever found yourself volunteering in any of, the, any of those other situations? Uh, does me co-hosting a couple of game shows count i saw that you yes. were awesome I, high five it was a fun time strong work girl mm -hmm. the sound effects on the game show were pretty they were pretty intense i was not expecting that level of quality for the sound effects i was like it was like it was like sitting next to alex trebek basically the, buzz, the buzz, kebertzilla the buzzer yeah. and everything so what is it myth versus reality what is it like to actually staff an anime convention as I'm sure you always see panels every year at Anime Boston and AAC about what it's like to staff an anime convention, myths in reality, you know, that fancy panel title. So mm -hmm. tell us about the myths versus the reality of staffing an anime con based on your experience at Anime Boston. And then obviously your experiences with mingling with the staff and weaving in and out behind the scenes at other conventions. So basically the myth is that it's basically you selling your soul to the convention and doing everything and basically turning into a robot for the convention where you're just basically looking at everybody, making sure everybody's doing okay. They're not like hiding weapons, all that good stuff. And you were staff, not security, right? I was security. security are, oh, you were security? Yes. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You actually Thank have to you. be like um, certified for security. Like you have okay. to do certifications, watch videos, all the good stuff. So it's a little bit more of a rigorous process staffing security at an anime con versus actually staffing as like a tech staff that say, or anything right. like that yes so there's anime boston tech staff and i'm using anime boston because that's the one i go to every mm -hmm. year and now i've included aac but so we have ab tech staff ab security mm -hmm. which you're a part of and then, and then, there's, then there's registration also staff as well registration staff yeah. what about the so the staff members that work the doors is that security yes anybody in okay. an orange shirt is a security staffer okay and then anybody is in a blue shirt, that's either tech staff or registration. Okay. Mm -hmm. Or that you'll see the sense. rare red staffers who are the security higher ups. Ooh, yeah. Red staff. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's where you want to be. So was it fun? Did you enjoy yourself doing it? Was so very, very enjoyable. Okay. Can you you'd think it would be very like rigorous and scary and like, oh, I don't know how to talk to people. But it's mostly from what I have dealt with is a lot of, you know, making sure people are in the lines, making sure mm -hmm. nobody is like inappropriately touching other other people and just sounds like herding cats. Yeah, basically <laughs> trying to herd a bunch of cats together at an anime convention. No, 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 no mm -hmm. <clears throat> background noise. All the all the cats simultaneously meowing. <laughs> if I had that sound effect, we would play it. But that's that's kind of what I picture as what it's like to staff mm -hmm. anime boss and as security and what you're doing with the IDs and making sure and making sure every time have every them. time every time a security member comes around and says please stand against the wall everybody has the same reaction don't tell me what to do like and every everybody <laughs> always gets so upset and everyone's like uh, huffing and puffing so I'm sure you have to deal with a lot of that guff actually but staff members are real we're here with staff and security and they're real people they're just trying to do a job they're trying to make the convention run smoothly right and then it's just it, trying to make it, sure everybody's it, having a good time. This is not Sons of Anarchy Convention Edition. There's got to be some some order, some semblance of order to it. Mm, majority speaks, yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, the only time really that I've ever had any issues with it was like actual like situations where it was, you know, dangerous. Mm. Like my first time doing security staff was the year before. 
um, I had a situation while I was manning a door where there was a, an older gentleman, middle-aged, and mm-hmm. he was basically preying on these younger girls who were cosplaying. Cosplay creeps. Yeah. I had See to... See my Tumblr for a yeah. video about that. Mm-hmm. Erin Spencer, 2187. There's a video on cosplay creeps. I forget the name of the YouTuber, but it's on my Tumblr if you want to. Check out that video and then give that particular content creator a like mm-hmm. if, you, if you enjoyed the content of the video. She does a really good job of the video talking about um, the different levels of cosplay creeps. Because they're out there. It's scary. Cosplay is not consent. We've discussed that before. So. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically, the guy was just like, oh, hey, yeah, you want to you want to get a picture and all that. But you could tell that he was, you know, he like he Being was asking a for a creeper. hug and whatnot. Like these were definitely underage girls. Like they were 13. <sighs> different had, than the free hugs people at conventions. Totally different. Oh, yeah. You're not allowed to wear free hug signs. Oh, you're not? Mm-hmm. Since That's when? still soliciting. Oh. That's always been a thing, apparently. And, you know, it's 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 that's another subcategory of cosplay creeps, too. Okay. Yeah. You have to tell them to put it away or go to an info desk, say, hey, can I wear this? Okay. I was not aware that that was a whole separate sub because usually Mm -hmm. maybe I've just been lucky because the people I've seen with the free hug signs didn't seem like people that were creeps. They seemed like very friendly, very approachable people. Mm -hmm. But then there are a lot of women, some non-binary people were doing it one year. It's more so there were a couple of instances where people ruined it for everybody else. Taking advantage of it. Yeah. So I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So how did you deal with that situation? Um, Basically, I called one of our redder shirts, not orange. One of the red shirts. um, And I had to get on my little radio. One of the Krav Maga Jiu-Jitsu guys. Basically, I had to call one of them on my little radio. And then they came. They shadowed the guy for a little bit. They saw enough. They ejected him from the convention and took away his badge, everything. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Did you hear about the guy in the in the video game and the game in the video lounge? game room? <sighs> so I I read his response and it's, it's his response made it seem like he was the victim. He somewhat was. Okay, so so basically the situation that happened at Anime Boston this year, 2018. We're in 2018, yes. right? In 2018, wow. Um, there was a streamer, right? He was a streamer. That's that was the whole guy. So there was yes. someone that was streaming, and he happened to, as from the story that I heard, there was. Uh, a woman who was walking, happened to be walking by him, was looking in his direction. So was able to, so I guess she had sort of been looking over exactly where he was sitting at the table. Mm -hmm. And right at that moment, as she sort of walked behind uh, behind him, there was a sort of very unfortunate circumstance, a timing and event, from what it seems, from his perspective, where allegedly he adjusted his Twitch camera or his streaming camera up or down at literally the exact same time as uh, this woman was walking by, and she accused him uh, of sexual harassment and of uh, voyeurism, basically. Mm -hmm. Of skirting, basically. Right. But the the video camera was... All the video cameras are posted on top of the televisions, correct? Or on top of the the computers? Um, So basically what he was wearing was a 360 camera. Like, he had a whole setup, like, on his person. Right. So you can see a 360 view. You've probably seen Facebook videos oh, of it. okay. Where this you can turn your own screen. This is starting to make a little bit more screen. sense now. Okay. Yes. And what happened was he saw a dog in the video game room. It was a service dog. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to give his viewers a better shot of the dog. I can see how this can be. Okay. I can see how this can be misconstrued yep. now. Okay. And okay. she basically made it a whole thing. Was it her dialing. dog? It was not. No, okay. She, she she just immediately. So he was trying to, to get a shot of somebody it. else's mm-hmm. dog. Okay. All right. I can I I can see how this can go both ways. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he should have. I I don't know personally if he had actually Asked had for like permission to video permission to, to like, zoom in. Yeah. In, in in general, I don't know if he had permission to even wear the equipment. Okay. Like, okay. Anytime this, this you is bring a lot any more sense now. anytime you bring any equipment into a convention, you have right. to get it at least permissible. This is this is making more sense. Okay, so mm-hmm. so Anime Boston official policy, as far as I know, they allow you to have a mounted camera on every TV, right? Yes. You can have a mount. Okay. So there's there's no issues that whatsoever with having a mounted camera in streaming. No, you have like no, on top they of have your no issue with apparatus. you streaming unless like you're in a panel and they say, hey, don't videotape this. Okay, right. So so yeah. so so saying it here now because this was where I was getting a little bit concerned uh, and nervous because of the way. So he was leaving some parts of the story out. So 100%, if you're a streamer, you're you're sitting in front of a computer uh, monitor or a television, you have a camera that is facing you on your stream. You can see your PIP of you, 100% okay. Yes. Correct. Okay. Although, then again, you should always check with the staffers 
always right. see if it's okay with okay. them and always get the okay from but someone who's higher up. Generally speaking, that's yeah. okay. Okay, that is my question. Info that, desks. Yeah. Beautiful places. That clears it up. That actually, that makes a lot more sense now. Obviously, there's two sides to every story mm-hmm. and I can see both sides now. Yes. I can I can understand mm-hmm. somebody with a 360, 360 camera apparatus zooming in on, on, on people, mm-hmm. how that can make people alarmed, for sure. So, I think that's it for Anime Boston because we got a rapid fire podcast rapid. today. So we're going to move on to Detroit Become Human because it's mm-hmm. one of the best story games that I've played in a long time. As far as narrative stories, basically a choose your own adventure story. I gave it, I don't think I actually did an official review uh, review yet, but once I put it on Tumblr and Twitter, I'm going to give it a four out of five. Because I, I base my reviews on fives. I base my reviews on fives. I feel like it's a better rating system. The tens always, I always get hung up between sevens and eights and nines. And then I just feel like it's it's easier for me to do on the five. So I would give it a four out of five. The story is amazing. The replayability for me, I think I mentioned before, was not ideal because I loved my ending the first time. There were a couple things that we discussed before that made me want to alter my ending. But for the most part, I, I really enjoyed the ending that I got. Which was the armed rev- the armed revolution awakening ending, triveling the yeah triveling. I just made up another word, triggering. And I always forget this: the awakening of the AIs. What's that called? I always want to call it the synapse. The uh, the becoming Skynet. Deviant. Uh, well, it, in the game, it's called becoming deviant. Yeah. I always just say Skynet. Um, there's 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 a, a phrase for the AIs and the world as we know it in reality, waking oh. up. I do not know it off the top of my own head. So tell me about your experience with Detroit. Okay, so first of all, spoiler alert for anybody who yes, listens past this point. Yes, spoiler alert from this point on. we got about six minutes left. Again, we're doing a sh- short, accentuated episode today. So spoiler warnings from this point out. We're going to be go be getting into spoilers for Detroit Become Human. So spoilers, Shannon, take it away. So basically, I got the peaceful, perfect, good ending that anybody could get on my first playthrough. It was a Which beautiful Which is a very experience. impressive I know. And and I didn't have anybody crucial die. I had Josh die. But he's he was one of the guys in Jericho and I don't think really he could live in my playthrough. But I got everybody out of there. Luther lived, Kara, Alice, Connor, Hank, everybody. And it was very moving and it made me feel happy inside and whatnot regarding the way that I took it and you know, it was very Reminiscent of like civil war, you know, civil rights movements and whatnot. Yes. Yeah, there, and, there were a lot of very yeah. specific references to the American civil rights movement. Some mm-hmm. people liked that and appreciated it. Some people didn't. It's mm-hmm. kind of one of those controversial topics, but. I mean, they directly referenced it also when yes. you were Marcus in the one chapter where he was I enjoyed it. freeing. But obviously everybody. it's a video game and we don't want to take away from the real civil rights movement, the real history. So I mean, he literally said we have a dream. <laughs> yes, so, yes, he did. So, it was really you know, beautiful in my playthrough, but yeah. others uh, going for the violent route. <laughs> I think, yes. I think <laughs> You have two people on the spectrum here. <laughs> right. So so Shannon, on her first playthrough, got the, the peaceful ending. You said Marcus sings? Marcus does sing at the end. With children, right? Mm, uh, no, sings with the other uh, androids oh, that okay. he saves. I, I, thought, I thought somebody mentioned that he was singing with groups of human children. And I would have been like, no. okay, well, that's perfect for the peaceful ending. No, he was singing with, he was um, he was backed in a corner. And it was just him and the last of his little revolutionaries. And they sang to prove their, in it, like, their, prove their growing humanity. Hold like that they weren't. Okay. Hold hands in, in song. There just soul. A lot robots. of direct references to the American civil rights movement. Yes. Yeah. Civil rights movement, for sure. So what happened to your Kara and your Alice at the end of your playthrough? Did you make it? Did you go to Canada? Yes, they did. Okay. Oh, yeah. They never got did captured. You, did you steal the bus pass from the family? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> oh, they were human. They're, yes. D- 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 mm. Were they human? Were they con- are they confirmed human? They, they were humans. Okay. They were trying to run. They had a baby, an actual baby. <clears throat> what were they trying to run from? They, they were, were, I believe, what I remember was they had a trip planned to leave the country because they did not like what was going on yeah, but there in was, the area. Right, but there was no immediate, didn't seem like there was an immediate threat to that family, right? No, but they could have thought that maybe the, a threat would have been precedent. Okay. Versus Kara and Alice who were going to be executed by... Mm, Kara, Alice, camps. and Luther. I had Luther live in mine. Yes. Okay, so, <laughs> so Luther died in mine. And for some reason, I played too many video games where and seen too many anime where the hero gets up 
it has to fight on and somehow overcomes. So I did not play dead. Mm. And Kara and Alice ended up getting shoved into one of the camps. Camp number five, I think it is. Mm -hmm. But on my playthrough, I did, I bounced back and forth, honestly, between violence and, and peaceful protest. So I led a peaceful protest in the square. I put up uh, the android emblems. But then when I turned the corner, these two police officers had shot and murdered like eight of my android companions. Yeah. So, yeah, I uh, nixed those two police officers in my first play on that playthrough. I spared them. As, did you spare them? Okay. Well, that's that's why that you got the, the ultimate forward. peaceful endings. That was um, other than ending. the message. That's where the game splits? That's Other than the message that Marcus gives on the video right. screen, that is one of the other branches out. Like, if you spared them, then so, the public opinion is okay of you. If you kill them, public opinion hates you. Okay. Yes. All right. So, okay. So, obviously, uh, my coworkers are very Blue Lives Matter. I work with other police officers I respect. This is a fictional video game. Okay. This is a fictional game. But uh, also, there's been several instances where, of well-documented police brutality throughout the country. So, this is one of those polarizing issues in a video game where art is imitating life where you see this choice with the two police officers who have basically just slaughtered uh, using their service revolvers just open fire indiscriminately against these androids who are alive. I, I believe they're alive. So you have the choice to uh, to retaliate or to uh, spare. And then obviously, mm -hmm. so in your version, you spared. In my version, I retaliated. Mm -hmm. And then after that, public opinion of me went down. Public opinion of you went up. I saw the, I saw the press at the end of the peaceful protest, which was pretty cool how the mm -hmm. press showed up. So then with mine, then I, led a, then I tried to lead a peaceful protest through the streets and it actually worked out perfectly for me because we led a peaceful protest. We obviously, in that situation, I said, look, we were attacked. We let that, there was a police officer that's up in front of us. We stopped and threw our hands up. And he went, oh my God. And he just kind of ran away and, and let us pass. And then the military opened fire on my group of androids. So then at that point, I was like, no, we're going all out war, baby. Humanity has had enough. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, I've, we, did, we discussed this on the way here. Shanna still has hope for humanity. I don't. So when they gave me the opportunity to push that revolution button, I was like, I cannot push this button any faster. So and obviously I think a lot of people are disillusioned with what's going on in, in the world right now. Especially a lot of my listeners will be just probably individuals that, I, that will relate to some of the themes regarding what's going on with, with uh, police brutality across the country and then also what's going on with Politics Civil rights politics. I think I think this really resonated with a lot of people. It's so, close to home. Yes. And then, so my Connor went deviant. Did your Connor go deviant? Yes, he did. I love Connor. Mm -hmm. There's a really great meme I, I found on my uh, Tumblr, and it was Connor loves sumo. Connor loves Hank, and the little chibi Hank was drunk, face down on the on a, on a table, with sumo alcohol attack. bubbles. Yeah. <laughs> Good, Good boy. Dog. And then the last one was Connor loves, and then you see Marcus Chibi step into the screen and say, "You want to join my club?" The best ship. Connor best loves ship. revolution. That too. So did you? You said you're Connor Montevian. Yes. Okay. Funny Who's enough, your... um, if you have Connor stay a machine, he dies regardless. Oh well. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's sense. no way of having. I, Connor I love, love the deviant Connor outfit with oh the black god. jeans it's so sexy oh my god it's so beautiful he's so pure though he's innocent i i, I don't want to call connor sexy but like the the actor i will he's brian sexy as hell. brian duckert whatever his name is the mm -hmm. actor that portrays connor is a very sexy man so i appreciated the the mocap and then the mocap in that outfit so oh, yeah. obviously the character of connor is very innocent pure a whole separate issue but mm -hmm. so who were your was your favorite character connor um my key favorite character was kara because I love Kara. I love Kara. Did you? I love did you the... kill Todd? I did. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> nah. If you if you don't kill Todd though, you can meet him at the airport. I I heard, but I I, I wasn't gonna let him abuse a little girl like that. Mm -hmm. Especially not as a deviant android. I'm like, ooh, I have control now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's see how this goes. Mm -hmm. So obviously, everyone loves Connor. My favorite character. We discussed this. We differ on this. My favorite character is North. Because I love that she's well. I did the revolution ending, and, and the second that I knew I was going to have the opportunity to push that button, I was like totally in love with the character of North. And then I love that Marcus, who's one of my favorite characters, had this intimate relationship with North. And I think it just she just kind of spoke to me and like the revolution and everything. And again, speaking to how a lot of people are just disillusioned with the way that the direction that this country is taken. And here now, 
Um, this game has given players the opportunity to uh, rise up even in a fictional setting mm -hmm. and just kind of experience and sort of take out some frustrations in this beautiful story of uh, art imitating life, which is a story that is uh, very possible, if not already happening mm -hmm. now. So it's a relevant story that we can see happening in the, right before our eyes with like Boston Dynamics and all these uh, AI and robotics companies. So do you have any final thoughts on Detroit before we wrap up our sort of rapid fire? I mean, if you really want episode? to get in touch with your own political side and the way that you believe in things, I definitely say give it a try and or at least watch a playthrough or something because mm -hmm. it definitely, definitely will give it a shot it tells how you how you are as a person the way that you react to certain things in i the said game. that to my i said that to my folks when i was trying to explain the game to them I mm -hmm. said it's a reflection of their personality yes so, so all right esp 010 the accentuated anime boston and detroit become human edition i think that's it it's a great game go out and play detroit become human Staff and Anime Con if you want. They have parties afterwards all weekend. Oh, we do. Sun Sunday and Monday or just Sunday? Sunday. Sunday. Okay, yeah. They had like a whole crazy party I missed out on. I saw all the snaps, though. It's beautiful. It looked wonderful. So yeah, Detroit Become Human, four to five. My favorite character is North. The acting is incredible. The voice acting is incredible. The mocap is incredible. It's a gripping story. And the first level, the hostage negotiation level, oh my goodness. That they was throw you right most, in the action. Yeah, that was one of the most intense missions I've ever played in any video game ever. They just throw you right into it. So, oh, yes. amazing. Phenomenal. No boring, slow yes. introductions. So, ESP1010. We have the, yeah, the binary episode. Binary for Detroit Become Human. 0101101. Perfect. <laughs> Add one more zero in for good measure. So, ESP1010. Join us on July 17th for our official E3 2018 coverage with Brooke Johnson. We're going to do an hour or more of total E3 coverage trailers, all that good stuff. We're going to discuss and talk about it all, so you're not going to want to miss that one. We're going to see if we can get some trailers up on the screen as well and then add some picture and picture in the video after. So be sure if you missed out on E3 to check out July 17th on the live stream, frmedia.org slash frcradio, and then obviously on YouTube, Aaron Spencer Podcast on YouTube and then patreon.com slash Aaron Spencer Podcast. We're also giving away free stuff on our Patreon for anyone that donates one dollar or more. You can enter for the chance to win awesome free anime loot stuff. Free. Yeah. So what well, technically what well, I mean you you put in a dollar and you have the opportunity to win like five different things. Where we just had one prize, but we're gonna give away like five other anime figures and some manga and some DVDs. So tune into that. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. We will see you next time. ESP010 mm -hmm. out.